What's going on guys, Brian here today. We're in a 2022 Toyota RAV4 Prime SE. My last Prime video I did on the XSE for 2021. So we're gonna get to take a look at something brand new. So if you're in the market for a RAV4 Prime, this is gonna be your entry level of the Prime series. And if you're new to Prime, Prime means plug-in hybrid. So let's check it out. We're looking at Toyota's famous five-seater SUV, the RAV4, fully evolved into the plug-in hybrid system, which means if you plug this thing in, you can get up to 94 miles per gallon E, which represents you plugging it in. You don't have to, so if you choose not to plug this vehicle in, you're going to get just shy of 40. There have been reports of some people getting even a little bit more than that, but that depends on driving conditions. And just over 300 net horsepower. So it's our second fastest vehicle, second to the Supra. And with Toyota's hybrid system built into it, which has been very successful for over a decade, you're looking at a car that has all the latest technology as far as the hybrid and electric is concerned with Toyota's reliability built right into it. With this car, you have a standard system called Toyota Safety Sense that has a radar device in the emblem and a camera in the windshield. So while you're driving your RAV4 Prime, the car can actually sense people and cars and react in time if you don't. With an adaptive cruise control, road sign assist that reads road signs, and you have automatic high beams. Not only that, if you choose to have this feature on, you even have lane trace assist. So when you're using that cruise control, it will keep you in the center of your lane and steer you back into your lane if you start to swerve out of it. It's not a self-driving car though. And we're talking about a car that used to have a very big hump in the back where the hybrid battery was, but that's been taken care of thanks to some research and development and the TNG platform. You have all the space that you used to have in a gas model, plus way more efficiency. So if you're in the market for a RAV4 Prime or you're just curious about this car and you want some details, stay tuned because I'm going to break down the exterior, engine and powertrain, and work our way inside the car. First things first, when you're looking at your 2022 RAV4, the biggest change that I notice and many people do right away is the new style of the headlights. So we still have that projector beam that Toyota's famous for on the RAV4, especially middle trimming up on the hybrids. It's been moved a little further down on the uh, headlight here, but we have this new strip, I call it the eyebrow. So we have two separate LED strips here and it totally breaks up the headlight. It's given it a whole different look. The, uh, you know, the RAV4 has always had kind of like that ghost face. I don't know, we're looking way more robotic, a lot more futuristic on this headlight. And with the headlight out, everything seems to disappear in that black plastic, which gives it a nice sporty look. And speaking of black plastic, Toyota's very generous on the black plastic. From a little bit of a distance here, you'll notice we have black all over the place, which really plays very nicely with the white. And it's not going to be a matte black. So you have a painted black surface here where the fog lights would be. Now fog lights is a controversial thing for the hybrid community. A little different with the Prime though, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, they kind of did away with fog lights on the earlier trims. Nice piano black in the front. And down below, very shiny. With a silver lip to break it up. So that's going to give it that tough chin. You know that sturdy presence with all of this black here and really show you where the borders are onto the sides totally different style wheel than its uh, upgraded sister the xse we have a simple fat five styles what i call it and these are five blades you have a machine finish here in the uh the larger part of the wheel and then it looks like magnetic gray metallic on the outside and this is an 18 inch rim disc brakes all around with painted black around the wheel well so let me get an angle here that's going to be midnight black metallic so there's actually a little flex of silver and blue i don't know if the camera's going to do it justice black on the roof racks here lots of sharp edges and sharp lines it's not that bubbly little bunny rabbit that the RAV4 has always been You've probably heard me say that about the RAV4 before, but look at from a distance, look how slim the car looks. But when you get close, it's actually hiding its belly with some painted black. 
So the nice thing about that painted black is it's really making things disappear in the shadows to give it a slim, more athletic look, which I appreciate. The catch is it could scratch up a little bit more than that flat black that you see on your gas models and your, your base models of the RAV. To the back, one of my favorite parts, the taillights. You have this beautiful, I call it the mascara look to the taillights. Adds a little dramatic flare to the tails. There are super bright LEDs at nighttime, so you're going to have a straight strip that goes down slightly. And when you press the brakes, it shoots a lot of light to let people know not to touch your precious car. Plenty of black in the back all the way down. So from a distance, it's going to give it that slim look again. And we even have a uh, color matching lip over here, which would be silver on the XSE. Black badges gives it that extra finishing touch. And even onto the side, you'll see that all wheel drive badge on the back door here. And then we have the hybrid badge on the side. Our powerhouse is Toyota's 2.5 liter four cylinder, which Toyota's used on many of their four cylinder cars. This might look complicated if you're not familiar with mechanical uh, setups here, but it's still a simple Toyota engine. We have part of the hybrid system here, our air in box, so we can change our air filter on our own if we'd like to. Braking system is over here. And then right here is just a dust cover where we would have our coil packs, fuel rail, and our cooling system. Yes, there's lots of stuff going on, but when you think about this and compare it to other cars, there's still lots of space to work, and it still is a simple design compared to some of its competition. And that's what makes these reliable and cheap to fix. 302 horsepower from this power plant, so you can put it into sport mode and this thing launches. And with the all-wheel drive system, you can get up to 50% of the power to the rear wheels. So when this thing is driving and you step on the gas, it can send half the power to the back wheels. And what's nice about the hybrid system is that there's no mechanical connection between the front and back axles. So not only do you have less weight, but you have less wear and tear and less moving parts. And if you're totally new to hybrids, one of the best things about a hybrid Toyota is you can literally just start it up and drive it the way you want to. There's no fancy buttons you gotta push to get it to go to all wheel drive. There's nothing you need to do to make it turn the engine off and drive electric style. And there's really no input that's actually needed to make this car be efficient. Now, of course, we do have some buttons where we can manipulate the way this system acts and what it does, given the circumstances, but that's not actually needed in order to make this car drive, which is awesome. But speaking of the way the RAV4 Prime drives, let's take it for a spin. So being that the RAV4 Prime has a key fob, there's one important thing I wanted to go over with you, that you don't have to push these buttons in order to get things to open up. You can just grab the door handle and it will unlock for you, or put your finger on the side and it will lock. Also, for the hatchback, there's a button on the hatchback right over here that you can just push and it will open up as well. This button is unique to the RAV4 Prime. And when you push this button, after locking the car, you push and hold this for a couple seconds, it'll turn on the AC system so that you can actually pre-climate the car without using any gas at all. So let's get inside. Start it up. All right, so here's a quick glance at what it looks like getting into the RAV4 Prime SE. The first thing that separates it is the cloth interior. It does have the same stitching as the... Uh, upgraded interior of the XSE. However, it is cloth. Some people prefer cloth. Some people prefer something like leather or soft text. This is what you get with the SE, which is nice. But let's start it up. We'll take it for a drive and then we'll go over some buttons. All I do is press the brake and the push button once. And I know that the vehicle's on because I see a little ready symbol in green. So I'm not necessarily gonna listen for the engine. Being that the speedometer is green, that means I'm in eco mode, which shows right here. If I were to twist this dial to the right, the speedometer turns red and goes into sport mode. If I push the button down, it will go white into normal mode. So I'm actually going to start off in eco. And let's take it for a spin. 
Here's a little picture, well, a diagram of the hybrid system. So it'll show arrows with different colors on this energy monitor diagram to show you where each individual component is getting its power. So if the engine was on, you would see red arrows going out to power the wheels. If the battery was powering the wheels, you would see energy going from the battery to the wheels. And then there's our two different motors to power the axles. So when I put it into drive, the automatic parking brake releases and I let off the gas and it moves. I'm getting power from the battery. I can change between eco, normal and sport while moving so I don't have to come to a stop. The trail mode is only really necessary if I'm going on a gravel trail. The auto EVHV is auto electric vehicle or back to hybrid vehicle. So I can actually make the car favor keeping the engine off or staying in hybrid mode. This button though, if I hold this, it doesn't go into charge hold. You just hold it to go into charge mode, which confuses a lot of people. So if the battery was not 100%, I could actually push and hold that in order to basically have the car keep the engine on to charge ahead of time for when I'm gonna need that electric range. So I'm doing about 30% throttle and my EV mode max speed is 84 miles per hour, which I'm not gonna do. I'm going the speed limit, which is 55. And you'll see the engine hasn't even come on yet because I'm in eco mode. It has a very low center of gravity. It's a pretty quiet ride, especially compared to the, you know, base models, like the little gas LEs. It's a little bit of a windy day today though. So let's flip it into sport mode and give it a little bit of juice. I'm gonna go all the way down on the throttle. And 60. Nice, and that was with the engine off. So that's really nice. I have it in EV mode. When you give it the option to put the engine on as well, you get even more of a pull, but I don't want to beat on the car. This car had just sold recently, so I'm, I want to be respectful of the people that are going to own and enjoy this car. But yeah, we haven't used any gas at all, and we're in sport mode, and it's got plenty of torque without even having the engine on, which is great. The visibility is awesome. I like how the mirror is on the door. You can see right through there where the A-pillar is. The braking is great. The braking is actually better on the hybrids than it is on the gas models because they have what's called regenerative braking. So it's it's an updated braking system that's designed to collect energy from the brakes, kinetic energy actually, and send it to the system. So you'll see if I speed up real quick and then I push the brakes, it starts sending energy from the brakes to the battery, which is really cool. What's also great is when I have my hybrid plug in here to plug the car in if I'm home or at work or at one of those charging stations, when I lock the car, that plug will actually lock to the car so somebody can't just come and take it. Because believe it or not, people actually steal plugs. But you don't have to worry about it with the Toyota because it'll lock to the car. And that's one less thing that you even have to think about. And then all you do is hit the unlock button and you can unplug it right there. Now the gas door is not going to be like the electric plug door was. This actually is opened up from the inside of the car with this little button over here. And speaking of buttons, let's go over some buttons, talk about the uh, interior size and space and wrap up the video. So getting into the back, what's nice is it's actually very easy to get in this car. A lot easier than some of the competition, but I'm not going to mention names. The storage on the door is decent. This is probably going to hold just about a bottle or maybe a case of sunglasses. What's nice is though, I have a heated seat in the rear and there's nothing like heated cloth when you live in New York. With the door closed, this is eye level. I'm actually sitting pretty low. Um, I'm pretty tucked in. My shoulder is right about where that window line is but I don't feel claustrophobic because there's plenty of room to see. 
the windows are big. I actually prefer sitting low in the car to the stadium style seating that you see in uh, some of our competitors with the armrest down that hovers and doesn't hit the, the cushion there. I'm comfortable. I have plenty of leg room. I'm just under six feet and this seat is actually set to where I would be sitting if I was in the car up front. The ventilation in the back is nice. Not a separate temperature back here, but I get my own airflow. And I have the two USB-C plugs back here, which are gonna be really fast for charging and a one piece floor mat to keep that carpet protected. Yes, that's important. And the little things are nice too. These actually light up at nighttime in blue, which is cool. Neat little design here. Kind of looks like hands holding each other or like a little braid. The seats fold down a lot easier than the last generation. You just grab this little lever over here. You can do it from up here. You can do it from the back. And once it's back up, that's its most upright position, but you can recline it a little further back like mine is to make it even more comfortable. But look at all that visibility, guys. Let's check out the cargo space. All right, in the back, I have my bubble wrapped charging cable here. Some of them even come with an official Toyota first aid kit and owner's portfolio, which is great for the Toyota geeks. Now I don't have a sectioned off cubby, but I have a little cubby that I can kind of put something in there. My 12 volt plug, an LED light, not the little yellow candle light that everyone else gets and four heavy duty D-rings so I can ratchet some stuff down. Privacy shade, which is easy to remove by just pulling on one of the spring loaded heads. And if I fold down these seats here, you'll actually see how much space the car has. And with the easily removable tonneau cover, I'm just gonna be careful not to scratch up the interior. I now turned this plug-in hybrid into a little baby pickup truck. Check that out. So if you're moving, if you travel a lot, if you're a nomad, adventurer, college student, getting your education up, you got all the space you need with the best efficiency possible. Now you're not gonna wanna pull on the handle here to close this. There's a button over here and you push that. And this is height adjustable too, so you can adjust this so that it doesn't come up a little too high for traveling into a big city where they have the you know low ceilings or if your garage just doesn't go up that high. Getting into the passenger side, I have a little bit more storage on the door here. Not a ton. You know, the, there's part of me that wishes it went all the way to the side, but I'm sure they had their reason. It's probably to do with the module for the window or something like that. Soft material here, not ultra luxury, back to a hard plastic. Simple Toyota buttons. And I really like this stamp here that they do on the door sill that says RAV4. That's super tough. And I'm actually gonna be upgrading my pickup truck to get something like this, a door sill protector, because when I bring out my nephews and nieces, they always love to step right here and it scratches it up. So it's nice that it comes like that and it matches. And here's what we look like on the front with a very easily place shelf here you can fit your stuff it's got a little bit of a lip so things don't slide out let's go to the driver's seat and go over some of these buttons all right Toyota people first things first your floor mats lock into the floor always make sure they're locked if they're not locked they could slide under your brake pedal and that could cause an accident and don't put floor mats on top of your locking floor mats because they'll just slide on your brake pedal please keep it safe guys I see stuff like this all the time and like I said, with the key fob in my pocket, I can lock the car just like this. Now it's locked, and to unlock it, I do this, and it unlocks. And what's really cool is if the key falls out of my pocket, and it's in the car, and I try to lock it like this, you hear the beep? It'll even say on the screen it detects a key in the vehicle. Even if I do the manual lock here, and it's manually locked, check this out. It unlocks and refuses to leave me stranded. And lastly, if the battery dies on this key fob, there's actually a little lever here 
where I can pull the slide out key and I can enter the vehicle right through here with that slide out key. And then I just take the dead fob with a, a non-functioning battery and I press the brake and I hold the fob right against the button and it'll start right up. You actually don't need the battery to be working in this to start the car. So you will never be stranded with your key fob. Here's our introduction. Simple and nice. Let's do some of the buttons. I'm not gonna go crazy in this video. So we have auto down, windows all around, and auto up. You just do a hard push or a hard pull. Got my window lock, door locks, and mirror adjustment over here. Down below, I have the brightness to my gauges, the auto high beams feature, defrosting wipers. It's not a fancy wiper, there's just wires in the glass heated steering wheel, and my hatchback opening. Down below I have the hood latch, and I have the gas. On the side of the steering wheel, if I pull this down, I can actually telescope and raise and lower the steering wheel, which is a beautifully wrapped steering wheel with red stitching. Check out that fat steering wheel. Super easy to grip. Speaking of the steering wheel, behind the steering wheel I have the headlight function, off, automatic, parking, and on. Most people leave it in auto. If you leave it in auto and those high beams are activated, you don't have to push it forward anymore to activate them. You just leave it the way it is and they'll do the automatic high beams and this will bypass, which is actually technically safer because you don't want to fumble with things if you really need to get those brights on now and the system didn't do it in time. So cool for Toyota for updating that. On the side, I have basic functions for my wipers. They do have automatic rain sensing wipers, which is part of the moonroof and weather package this car has or have low and high. I can change the sensitivity to the auto right here, and I have my back wiper. On the steering wheel, I have the arrow select and back button to operate the MID, which is multi-information display. Then I have my answer and hang up calls button here, volume, and voice commands. On the right, I have the distance following for the cruise control, the lane departure alert, which has lane tracing assist, music mode, and a secret mute button if you press and hold it, and my tracks. For the cruise control, you don't have to use the radar cruise control if you don't want to. If you press and hold that, the little car symbol will go away on the screen, of course, not on the steering wheel. How cool would that be? And the arrow moves to the left, and then you'll have the old school non-radar cruise control that will not break. It will keep on going, so keep that in mind. But to set this, you push the radar button, hit set, and you can increase and decrease speed right there. Onto the MID. When I use the arrows and select button here to operate, I have some menus on the bottom. So we'll start with the leaf menu. I can see different stuff about my economy going up and down. Next over I have the navigation and my systems, vehicle info. So I can see at a glance, you know, some different things here on the car. Very useful, especially this one if you wanna see how much power the back wheels are getting. And this is the settings, the little gear symbol. So I can change settings for all my features here. Lane tracing assist. If I press and hold my OK button, I can do all kinds of stuff here, which is awesome. Pre-collision system. If I press and hold the OK button, I can also change sensitivity and turn it off. Blind spot monitor. Rear cross traffic alert will actually beep if there's movement when I'm reversing. And road sign assist. And there's even more settings here. This is where I can change that height. To the hatchback which is awesome and some volume settings etc so there's a lot of settings here it gets very advanced i'm not going to go over every single little thing just the basics messages so if the car needs maintenance or it's sensing something it will actually keep that lit up orange that little symbol there to remind you until it's taken care of on the left this is where the rpms would be but i have a representation of rpms power eco and charging that'll bounce up and down as you drive this is a glance of my battery charging and my gasoline level here. And of course the speed is the big one on the top. This little guy, you'll see him appear and go away based on the engine status. Stands for electric vehicle. So when the engine is off, he pops up. When the engine is on, he goes away. So you can see at a glance, is my engine on or not? That's EV mode, which I chose. That means I'm choosing to keep the engine off as long as possible. That just means the car's ready to drive. So never forget it. You're only ready to drive when it says ready. Of course, if the car is off, the needles will all be down and everything will be dark. 
But say you only push this once for the radio, and then you pushed it again for your climate. You might be under the impression with all this lit up that you can drive, but you're not because there's no, and it's even trying to tell you here, but people ignore stuff here all the time. You wanna look for that ready symbol, which I just pushed the brake and the push start button to start. See, it didn't hear the engine, but I know I'm ready to drive now because it says ready. It also tells me what gear I'm in over here, outside temp and my odometer. So if I put it into reverse, I can see right here because it says R, but of course the screen will show me right there. When I put it back in park, in about two seconds, the automatic parking brake will go back on and it doesn't even roll, which is nice. And it has a brake hold feature as well too. So when you have your seatbelt on, if you push that, the car will let you stay in drive, but take your foot off the brake, which is really cool. Just don't forget to put it back in park. Let's do the climate control. These two big knobs, they're squishy, they're, they're really cool. It's like being in a truck. They change the temperature, not the fan. Your fan is actually right here. It's getting a little warm in here. There we go. So I can change my temperature like this. If the passenger changes theirs, they can have their own, but I hit sync and now, oh, let me sync it again. I can change it all from the left, which is great. Front and rear defrost are right next to each other. When I'm in eco mode, it'll do eco heat and cool, which is kind of more of a modest version of the heat and AC. And there's my fan up and fan down air direction, recirculate, which you always want to use with AC when you want to cool yourself off, and front cabin prioritize. So this will cut off the AC in the back. I have auto, so it'll work like a home thermostat, or I can turn the system off and just simply resume it like this. There's my climate. Notice how everything is next to its uh, button here, which makes things easy to read and remember. And down below I have my heated seats, low, off, and high. Back off on both sides. And a button to turn off my traction control if I need a little more power to the wheels and want to allow for some wheel slip. Great for when I'm having fun in the snow safely and going out in the gravel trails. Maybe a little bit of light sand. You can get stuck in the sand very easily in cars, guys, so learn how to do the sand stuff. Or a little bit of mud and dirt. Down below that, I have a 12-volt plug and a USB plug, and this is going to be the one for the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Right now, the only wireless is on the Tundras. And we went over the drive buttons. We have the Eco, Sport, and Normal, the different controls for the hybrid system, my braking holds here, and trail. The shifting is in a straight line, but if I go down and over, I can actually shift forward or back. No paddles, just shifting like this, and you'll see down below, it controls my gears right there. Back into drive, back into park, parking brake engages, done. Two cup holders here, bottle holders in the back, cup holders in the armrest in the back. And inside of here, I have a nice little carpet with two USB-Cs. And if you guys have been loyal followers since day one, I was silly and uninformed just a year ago. I used to think USB-C was silly, but now I really like them. They charge fast and they're easier to use and they're smaller, they're more efficient. I thought it was just an Apple thing, but hey, I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong and I'm willing to learn. Hazards are right in the middle, super easy to get to. I have a beautiful frameless rear view mirror here with home link to three garages. It's not auto dimming, so I have a flip switch and some cars even have the digital, but this is simple. Still get the home link though, which are these three buttons down below. Sunglass case with a soft backing and my safety connect. Guys, make sure you download the Toyota app and just activate your account. It's free, unlimited miles for the first year. It could save your life. I'm serious. It has saved people's lives. And my moonroof, which is not standard. It's a package. I can do open and close or up and down on that. If you're going to leave this open to let the heat out, make sure there's no rain in your future. Beautiful black ceiling, which kind of adds to that sporty look and feel. And darkens up the cabin a little bit, which helps the eyes create a contrast with what's outside. Next up, let's do the screen and finish up. Onto the screen. So this doesn't go down. It doesn't fold. It's just made to stay right there. But when, let me put an eye level. When you're sitting at the right position with the eyes in the center of the glass, this blends in very nicely with the dash. So I have a touchscreen with four buttons on each side and a knob. 
I have my home screen, menu, audio system, and map. The map here, you have to use your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So you can track my phone menu and apps. This is where I can do my update. And if I have the remote connect, apps is where the authorization will be. Back to home, great place to see different information all at once. And I know I'm in the home screen because it says home on the top left there. Menu is where I can change things. So I can actually go to setup and I can change my color theme here. So if I want it to be a little more sporty, check me out. Or I can go back to this, say I want a little more contrast. That's a little easier to read for some people. And I can turn the beep on and off, which I'm gonna turn on for my client. I can customize what that home screen shows, but here's the most important one. Simple as this, which is coming in a month, guys. Super easy to change the clock on the Toyota. I can even do some advanced settings and teach the car to learn my voice. And I can even do some custom vehicle settings like change when the doors lock and unlock based on my shifting status, like park and drive, and even change how long the interior and exterior lights stay on after the car is shut off. Let me check that for my guy. So I'm gonna upgrade these. That way he can see in his driveway a little bit longer. See the headlights will stay on as a courtesy for 90 seconds so my client can see when he's walking down his driveway. He's a very nice older fellow. And the audio system, which I can't play for you because of copyright reasons, but Toyota's now come with 90 days of complimentary Sirius radio, which is fun. You can change the equalizer for each different audio source. Don't forget that. That way you can maximize the way things sound. That's pretty much the basics. To turn off the screen, I go to menu, I hit display, and I can turn the screen off like that. And it will still play music. I can still have phone calls. I just have less light in my face. And once I'm connected to Bluetooth, I'll have four little widgets here where I can set four people that I talk to a lot. So they're one tap away from a phone call. And then of course I can power on and off the radio and tune the volume here as well. As well as the steering wheel on the left with my thumb. And then change through the radio here. What's nice is if I tap something, it takes over the whole screen. So if I go back home and I want to see a better version of this, I just tap it. Pretty neat, right? 2022 RAV4 SE Prime. So I hope the video was helpful, guys. I tried to go over everything but not make it an hour-long video. So if you're new to this car or you're in the market and you're waiting on one because of inventory, uh, let me know if the video helped you. If there was something that I missed that you want me to touch, I answer my comments. So just ask me some questions. And also, I want to know what cars you guys want to see. I'm waiting on a Highlander Limited because people have been asking about that. But let me know what you want to see and I'll gladly do videos. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.